PlayStation View aims to replace your cable and satellite subscriptions with a smaller but streamlined package of channels that you'll actually watch and only have to pay $30 or a little bit more for. But is it a viable option? Now I cut the cord about four years ago and I've been jumping from service to service, Sling TV, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. I've tried them almost all. How does PlayStation View compare to all of those and is PlayStation View going to be for you? Let's take a look. So PlayStation View offers a wide variety of, of channels to choose from. They have three different plans. The first plan is the slim plan and that'll get you your basic structure. So you're gonna get all your main channels through there. They have two other packages that are a little bit more in price and offer just a little bit more on the channel side. Now, for me personally, the basic package is plenty fine. Uh, the only reason I would go up personally is if it were college football season and I wanted to get the extra channels like ESPNU or Fox College Sports, the Big Ten Network, things like that. Those are the only reasons I would, I would upgrade from that basic package. Uh, the only other thing is that if I had a teenager, possibly that, that last package would be more for them. But the basic package is actually really good. And I, I feel like it offers a lot more than Sling TV, which is what I used to subscribe to before trying this out to see if I could replace Sling TV with PlayStation View. Uh, it offers more channels and it offers more quality channels at that. So one of the big things I really don't like about PlayStation View are the options for what exactly you can use it on. So what you can use it on are the PlayStation 3, the PlayStation 4, of course, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and iDevices. So that obviously leaves out Roku devices, which are huge among cord cutters. And probably the biggest fault for me about this service, I can't watch it on my computer. They have no computer app at all, which is mind-boggling. I, I would think that would be the first thing they have outside of their PlayStation apps. But unfortunately, uh, you can't, as of right now, watch PlayStation View on your computer, which really is disappointing because I'm a multitasker. When I'm working on videos, I often like to have something off on the side, and I have plenty to watch between Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, WWE Network, New Japan World, I have plenty of stuff to watch, but it would be great to have that TV option there as well. I may want to watch more shows or watch more TV if I were to have it on my computer in a different window. Also, with those uh, packages, you can add standalone channels like Machinima, Fox Soccer Plus, or Epix and Showtime for an extra fee. No HBO as of right now. But you can get HBO Go on its own uh, if you want, so it's not a huge deal. So let's take a look at the PlayStation 4 functionality. So I have this muted just for copyright protection. I don't want anything popping up that's going to flag this video so you guys can't see it. But uh, from right there you could choose your profiles and I chose my profile. Um, we really only use this one profile, so it's no big deal. Uh, but actually, you know what, let me go ahead and unmute this so that mute block gets out of the way and just turn the volume down. Much better idea. Anyway, so this is the first screen you see when you pop up on PlayStation View on PlayStation 4. Uh, and it, this, it's the same way on PlayStation 3 as well, but what, it shows you what you're watching, what's up next. Uh, if you go down, you can go to your shows. So all of the shows that you subscribe to are going to be right here. Uh, let's look at Preacher real quick. I can go to Preacher, 
um, I have the first episode DVR'd. So when you pick a show, it will DVR the latest episode for you so you can watch it and it'll be available for a certain amount of time. If you go down further, you can look at your recently watched channels and then the all channels. So this is one form of the guide. This is not the main form of the guide though. If we go down further, we can see what's on live TV right here. Recommended stuff, featured shows. Oh, Hotel Hell, I'll have to look at that. And that's it for that. Now, I wanna show you something. Let's go back to Preacher here on my show. So if you go down, it shows shows that you might like. And all of these shows um, are not on demand, but they could be on demand. So let me let me see here. Let me, let's go to AMC. So we go to AMC. It has the featured shows recommended by viewers. So it's showing you all the shows basically that AMC has. Let's go to Ocean's Eleven real quick. So it shows you when Ocean's Eleven is going to be airing, 1:30 p.m. Let's go back real quick. Uh, let's go to Talking Dead and you can actually catch up with the last episode right there. So it does have shows on demand as well. So let's go to the guide now, which is the main thing of this whole interface. So by to go to the guide, I back out here with circle and I press start and it pops up this guide. So it's it's kind of at first it was a little jarring. Um, I typically don't like guides like this because it's all jumbled, it's kind of messy, but also uh, what is it? it's basically like a TV guide. So if I can see, oh, Nightmare on Elm Street is on, and it is the second one, which I actually, <laughs> actually like quite a bit. But you can thumb through here uh, and pick what you want. So let's go to some channel here. Burgerland sounds delicious. So let's go here. It's going to load up. I mean, it, it happens pretty quickly. It, I have this hardwired with an Ethernet cable, cable. I highly recommend if you're going to use this service, try to use an Ethernet cable. Don't use your Wi Fi. You can use your Wi Fi, but you're going to have a little bit more of an issue with that. Uh, so here's one of the bigger problems with this service. One, there's no recall button. So I can't actually go back to the channel that I was just on without going back up here and thumbing through over here. Or I guess I could go, uh, let's see. Yeah, see, I mean, it's just a huge hassle. So you basically have to press start and go back to that channel. Um, another problem with this interface is that you can't channel surf. There's no channel up, channel down. If I push up, it goes to that. If I push left, it actually rewinds the TV. Um, and not all shows have that functionality, so be aware. Um, also, some shows don't have the rights to be broadcasted on this service. It's not many that have this, so it's not a huge deal. But on some occasions, on Destination America, let's dump through over here and see how how long it takes to get to one channel. Um, there are some shows on this channel in particular where, or, or on uh, ID, where it says, "Sorry, you, we don't have the rights to to stream this." So. That is something to be aware of. I haven't noticed it for any big shows, really, uh, but just something to be aware of. So uh, another big problem about this service is that depending on where you live, you may not get your local channels. Um, I don't, and you basically you have to live in a metropolitan area to get your local channels. I don't. I live in Northern California hours north of, of San Francisco and Sacramento. So I don't get my local channels. Instead, what you get is on demand. So let's go to Fox on demand here. So if I missed an episode of Hotel Hell, let's say, I can then watch that last episode on demand 
Uh, I think it goes back to the last episode. I'm not 100% sure. It depends on the show. Like Family Guy, look, you can watch... Uh, that's weird. It jumps from seasons and then episodes. But I guess this is season 14 now, so you can watch the last five episodes or so. And uh, that's actually pretty nice. I'm more of an on-demand guy anyway. I usually don't try to catch shows as they air just because it's it's kind of difficult to do with everything that we, we do here in this house. So having it on demand is actually my preferred method. But I can see if you're uh, into sports, uh, football, on Fox, you're not going to get it on demand, number one. And uh, number two, you're not going to watch it at all unless you break out the digital antenna and just use your local channel that way. So other problems with this interface, sometimes it won't load correctly. Uh, when you start up the app, it'll say loading, 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 and it just will never load. So obviously this interface still has a, a lot to work out. Uh, another problem, and let's go to one of these channels here. There's two channels that I've found in particular that do this, Esquire Network and Pop TV. Uh, click on this and we'll wait for it to load so I can actually show you but you'll see it's boxed for whatever reason like there's a huge huge black box and it shrinks the picture down for some reason so and, and also the picture is terrible so it's not really HD um, yeah it's just, it's just weird and the other channel that does it is um, pop TV which used to be the TV guide channel Right now, Beverly Hills 90210 is on. But you'll see the same thing. It's not as big, and it's kind of hard to tell. But I'd say, you know, a finger length of black box around it, two fingers of black box around it over here, and it's just the picture isn't very clear. So those two channels in particular, I haven't looked at every single channel yet. But some channels will do that. I have no idea why that is. I don't know if that's how it is on regular satellite or cable. Could be that way. I know that I watch Friday Night Tykes, which is an Esquire show on Netflix, and the picture's fine. It's perfect. It's HD. It's full. Uh, it fills up the TV. No problem. So I don't know exactly what to attribute that to, but that is something that I've had an issue with. So uh, one thing that really annoys me, but it's not a huge deal, is that... I'll get the West Coast feed. I am on the West Coast, that makes sense, right? Well, if I were to get a satellite, normally you get the East Coast feed, which is great because you get everything earlier. You don't have to stay up so late to watch it. So if I wanna watch uh, Monday Night Raw on the USA Network, it's gonna come on for me at eight o'clock here on the West Coast when the show actually airs at five o'clock on the west coast over on the east coast so everybody that over there sees it before I do um, that could lead way to spoilers and things of that nature so uh, it, it would be great if we had the option to choose west coast or east coast feed instead of it just pinning us with the west coast feed if we're on the west coast a minor annoyance not a huge deal but still something that I'm actually accustomed to when I use cable satellite whatever it may be is having that east coast seat East Coast feed. So that pretty much does it for the PlayStation 4 interface. I'm gonna switch over to the PlayStation 3 and show you why if all you have is a PlayStation 3, you probably don't want this service. All right, so here is the PlayStation 3 uh, PlayStation View app. As you can see, now using the PlayStation 3 controller. This <laughs> is a little bit um, of now, okay, this is a lot of frustration here with this app. So let's boot it up and kind of get into it. Okay, so here we are, back, same same deals. It looks identical. Pick your profile, and then it pops up. Uh, I believe we were on that last on the PlayStation 4, so that's pretty cool that it transfers over. But uh, So let's go ahead and pull up the guide. So here we go with the guide. It's going to load everything up here. So we're going to start going and look at that. I mean, it, it's not a huge deal, 
but it doesn't load the channels. So it doesn't load the channels very quickly and uh, so this will happen sometimes where it'll just zoom you across the guide for whatever reason and it's super annoying like that. And usually it'll do it all the way to the end of the guide. And <laughs> it's so frustrating. Uh, but the problem with it intensifies if you're using Wi-Fi. So if you're using Wi-Fi and trying to go across the channels here, it's going to zoom you all the way over. It's going to take forever. It's going to be unresponsive. Uh, I have it hardwired right now, and that's why it's doing it. I'm going to take the hardwire out and show you what it's doing that way. All right, so I've switched, I've switched everything over from a wired connection to a wireless connection, and my speeds have dropped about 5 uh, Mbps, so let's try this now and see exactly what we're going to get. Um, usually I have the PlayStation 3 in my bedroom, which is actually closer to my router, so I would expect it to do worse out here, but we'll have to see for ourselves. Okay, so like before, we get our profiles to choose from. It's still on Beverly Hills 90210. We'll bring up our guide here. Load up. And uh, yeah, I gotta tell you, it's working a lot better than it has in my in my bedroom, but still, it, see, there we go. That jump, so annoying especially when you don't have a channel surfing button on here or configuration to just stay out of the guide and turn the channel up or turn the channel down, whatever it may be. It's annoying. So if you have only a PlayStation 3 to choose from, I would say probably for now, stay away from PlayStation View. It's going to frustrate you. You're probably going to regret spending the $30 on it. There's a seven day free trial. So Go ahead and try that if uh, if you're curious about it, uh, but just remember that it's going to automatically charge you if you don't cancel it. So my overall thoughts on PlayStation View, to be honest with you, I like it. Um, I actually ditched my Sling TV subscription for PlayStation View. I think it offers more channels, more value, um, and overall it's just nicer. But not being able to use it on Roku or computer devices is a huge miss and they need to fix that. Not only that, but the interface needs a ton of work. Not just for PS3, but for PlayStation 4 as well. There are certain things they need to add in there. They don't want it to be just like t uh, satellite or cable, so that's the reason they kind of make things the way they do. But honestly, just don't mess with success. If, if it works for one platform, it's probably gonna work for you. It's because tons of users have, have tested it and that's what they like. We need a channel surfing button. We need a recall button. We need um, better performance as well. So overall, oh, we also need local channels. Those, those need to be everywhere. And I know that's not easy to do, but those need to be everywhere for this to effectively be uh, a cord cutting option. Because even if you have the digital antenna for your local channels, switching back and forth between all these things is gonna be such a headache. PlayStation can really capitalize by having all those things in one place, as my cats go at it right now. Anyway, so PlayStation View, um, thumbs up for me. Uh, try the free trial if you're interested. If you're looking to cut the cord, this may do it for you. You can check out all the plans and channels on their website. Uh, and this is not an endorsement or anything like that. I paid for this with my own money. Uh, and I really do find it uh, a useful app and something that I have used quite a bit so far. You know, sometimes you subscribe to certain things and you just don't use them and you're like, why did I spend that money on them? I don't feel that, that way with this. I'm 100% glad that I made the switch over from Sling TV. The only thing that I really miss is the El Rey network, uh, which is not on PlayStation View on the basic channels. I don't know if it's in the tiered packages or not, but um, 
Uh, that would be cool to have as well. But anyway, that's my review of PlayStation View. Uh, funny word, funny spelling, whatever. It's a great, great option if you're looking to get out under the enormous cost of satellite or cable at this point. So until then, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the vid to share it around so that other people can understand PlayStation View a bit better. See you guys later.